Swedish people are polite and friendly, and they don't like to make a big fuss. They often smile, but they might still be furious on the inside. This is a list of 10 things that you shouldn't do in Sweden. So you want to visit the cold north and explore the lovely country of Sweden, but you don't want to make a fool of yourself. I'm here to help you with that. With this simple guide you can avoid the worst pitfalls when you travel to Sweden. Let's kick things off with buying a round of drinks. So you're at a bar with some random Swedish people you've met and you notice that your glass is empty. You want to be a good chap so you surprise your new friends by bringing back a pint of beer for everyone at the table. Imagine your surprise when you're not met with cheers and thanks, instead you're met with suspicious looks. Buying rounds isn't all that common in Sweden, everyone typically buys their own drinks. If you buy a round, every Swede starts to do a mental calculation. Hmm, we're five people at the table. That means I'm gonna have to drink five more drinks and I was planning on going home soon. A Swede will feel obligated to pay you back for the drink you bought him. You just wanted to be nice, but instead you accidentally caused him anxiety. Imagine that you're starting a new job at a Swedish company. At the fika break you start asking people how much money they make. Everyone suddenly looks away and mutters something about a meeting they forgot. You just made a big mistake. Asking people about their salary is considered a big faux pas in Sweden. Swedish society is rooted in socialism and equality. Things are changing these days, but it's still considered rude to ask people about their salaries. A Swede will happily tell you about their divorce or their mental illnesses, but how much they make, that's a secret they'll take to the grave. But what if you start by first telling everyone how much you make? Well, that leads to the next taboo topic. Boasting is very rude in Sweden. You might be good at something or make a lot of money, but you don't talk about it. Jantelagen, the law of Jante, is a Swedish term for not believing that you're better than anyone else. The closest English term is the tall poppy syndrome, about cutting the head of any poppy that grows taller than the others. People might smile and appear impressed if you boast about something, but don't be surprised if you're never invited back again to a party with that crowd. They won't tell it to your face, but you've just become a boasting pariah that people want to avoid. The next thing not to do is pretty simple. Don't assume that all of Scandinavia is the same. Norwegians and Swedes are different, Danes and Swedes are different, and Finnish people aren't even Scandinavian, they're part of the Nordics. Each country has their own customs, their own language and their own set of values. Danish people are all drunk and lazy for example, and Finnish people are depressed and speak monosyllabically. And Norwegians just live off their oil money and wander around in the mountains, they don't do anything useful. So the next time you're thinking of saying that Sweden is similar to Denmark, then you're implying that we are drunk and lazy as well. No, but seriously, we see the differences in our cultures very, very clearly, even if you might not. Have you ever been on an escalator in Sweden and noticed that you have a line of people behind you sighing in frustration and looking annoyed? Chances are you've been standing on the left side of the escalator. Never stand on the left side. The left side is for walking and the right side is for standing still. This is mostly a problem in bigger cities like Stockholm. I don't even know if they have escalators in smaller towns. If you stand on the left side, no one will shout at you, cause Swedes dislike confrontation. But if looks could kill, you'd be stabbed more times than Julius Caesar. Here's a simple little rhyme to help you remember where to stand. 
Stand on the right, now that's all right. Stand on the left and you're a stupid bastard. In the US, it's common to call politicians religious and God-worshipping and God-fearing, and that's intended to be a good thing. If a politician in Sweden were to call themselves God-fearing, there would be quite a few raised eyebrows. Religion isn't very big in Sweden. Many people have some sort of faith though, and we do like churches. They're big and cool and they look absolutely awesome, but you don't really go there to worship God. That's where you listen to choirs and concerts instead. Most people in Sweden are atheist or at least agnostic, and it's seen as a bit of an odd thing to start to talk about your faith. The best way to ensure that you're never invited to any of the cool midsummer parties is to say that you're deeply religious. If you have to say anything, just say that you're spiritual. That's much more accepted. Do you speak like this most of the time? Then you're not really gonna fit in in Sweden. Swedish people are pretty quiet, and we appreciate people speaking softly if they have to speak at all. Also, having your phone on speaker mode is just completely unacceptable anywhere. Just forget about that feature completely when you go to Sweden. Use your headphones like everyone else. However, Swedish people aren't always quiet. When a Swede is drunk, they will be as loud and obnoxious as humanly possible. I'm not saying that we Swedes are like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but I'm not saying that we aren't. Do you enjoy a bit of personal space? Maybe a couple of decimeters or so? Well, Swedish people need at least a couple of meters at all times. During Covid, everyone had to stand two meters apart, but no one really noticed the difference in Sweden. Don't sit next to someone on the subway if there's an empty seat anywhere else in the car, and don't stand too close when standing in line. Otherwise you'll make us poor sweets extremely uncomfortable, and you'll come off as some sort of sociopath. Or possibly American. And whatever you do, don't start talking to people when standing that close. That's just plain weird. Next is a short but sweet one. Don't talk about a Finnish hockey team. Yes, the Finnish are pretty good at hockey. You don't have to rub it in. Sweden has been neutral for a long time, and we haven't been at war for ages. But the hockey matches between Finland and Sweden are as close as we get. There is one thing that makes Swedish people furious more than anything else. It's not murder. People die sometimes. It happens. It's not talking crap about Sweden. We do that ourselves anyway all the time. The worst thing you can do in Sweden is to cut in line. Standing in line is holy in Sweden. You must respect the queue and you cannot try to cut in line. Granted, this is a bit of an extreme example. This is the line to get into Comic-Con Stockholm, but the principle still stands. Do you remember the law of Janta I mentioned earlier? Basically, don't believe that you're special and that you deserve to move ahead of others in the queue. It's all about fairness. Everyone hates standing in line, but everyone has to share the pain, and no one gets special treatment. And there you have it. Cutting in line is probably the worst thing you can do in Sweden. And that ends my list of the top things not to do if you visit Sweden. I hope you found it useful, or at least interesting. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day. Now to show what a hypocrite I am, I am gonna try to cut in line, cause I have a press pass. Haha, <laughs> sucks to be them.